Hey Defenders, welcome back to our channel. So today we have something really interesting. So this time what we are going to be talking about is stable diffusion and convolution neural networks. These are two different technologies by itself, right? Let me start on the very basics of this, right? What is stable diffusion? The word diffuse, right, is the opposite of the word infuse. Infuse is you put in something. Diffuses you squeeze out something from some whatever, right? So the idea of stable diffusion is very simple, right? You can extract high quality image, right? From a diffused source of data. Just think of this, those old days when you switch on the TV or the television, right? You see those diffused black and white spots across the TV, right? So that kind of an image, which is considered as the noise, is called the diffused image, right? From a diffused image, it is possible that you can recreate any kind of a sharp, crystal clear, high resolution image by using this model called the stable diffusion, right? So what happens is you are trying to denoise an image and arrive to a high quality, uh, high resolution uh, image. Usually, a stable diffusion is a model that is quite common in AI and ML world today, right? You might have heard about mid journey, you might have heard about other tools where you give in a prompt and creates images. So stable diffusion majorly is into image creation tasks. Right. But I, what I want you to understand, the uh, fundamental idea here is you have an image that is full of noise. Right? You can't identify any image from that. From that kind of an image, it is possible to denoise to any image you want, right? which is really of high quality, high resolution image. This process is called the denoising or particularly in this process called the stable diffusion. Okay, now we spoke about something called the stable diffusion, right? Diffusion, let me repeat that. On the contradictory, I saw a video today, which was really interesting to me because as a cybersecurity person, I could relate closely to this particular video. Okay, in this particular video, I'm just gonna play this video, but before that, I want you to understand what is convolution neural networks. Convolution neural networks is a model where you have a high resolution image. You cut it into multiple small image, but on a certain manner, you will still be able to keep the parameters of the image, even though the image is broken into multiple times, right? So most likely if you break the image into close to four parts, right? So you are actually maintaining 25% of the image, right? When you cut the image into four parts, you, you are maintaining close to 25% of the parameters of the image. But let me tell you, right? This particular video actually was an eye opener for me because I really learned something from this. But before that, I want you to understand when you take photos with your camera, your camera actually puts in some data called the metadata inside of the images, right? For example, you take a photo with your camera and give me that photo, right, as an email. Now it is possible that I can look into the metadata of the particular image and identify which camera was used, when the photo was clicked, which location it was clicked, who was the author of the particular camera, the owner of the particular camera and so on. Such images are actually stored as a part of the image. What I feel is there is a portion of sensitive, critical, important data, which is already part of the photo, right? Here, in, in a particular photo, you can actually convert a photo from one form to the other. But what I'm saying is there is something called metadata from which you can extract some key information. Likewise, here in the CNN, convolution neural networks, you are able to derive that 25% uh, of uh, characteristics is really good enough to identify what images and what it can be formed to and formed from. Let us quickly watch this very interesting video, right? If you pay attention in this video, there is a photo of this dog and it is cut into at least 10 pieces or 15 pieces. 
and we separate it into 50% each in a certain way you are still able to see that the particular dog is visible and we are able to understand that now it is again cut into another 50% right which means the photo becomes like this wow but pay attention something close here i am still able to identify that the particular image is a dog and i am able to see it four times if you ask me i personally think this is the reverse of how stable diffusion works right in stable diffusion you create a high quality image from a noise but on convolution networks basically the usage is different in uh, stable diffusion it is used to create image generation tasks specifically but on convolution networks they, they majorly used to for identifying the photo or identifying a object inside the photo uh, or uh, categorizing a particular photo and so on right uh, say not just photo even video for example on a video if you are able to identify it is a car it is a man it is a uh, woman or it is an animal right these object classification etc can be done using only cnn convolution neural networks so this particular video was an eye opener for me and i personally thought that as a cyber security person where uh, certain parameters are usually stored inside an image but here as a cnn versus the diffusion model we are still able to identify the pattern and the metadata the so called metadata is equivalent in some other form right so in case you really did like this consider sharing this information and if you have any questions around this uh, please do post it on the section below and please be mindful it is possible that i can do this completely on the local system you don't need to be on the internet and use certain tools online you know like mid journey or etc to do stable diffusion or uh, do uh, cnn it is still possible that you can completely do them on the local system in case you are interested in that please drop in a comment on the section below i'd be more than happy to tell you how you can set it up locally how you can you know what are the commands what are the is there any docker image with, with which you can readily create them and so on right so i hope you learned something new from this right it may be directly or indirectly around cyber security but i thought i should share this it it may be of some use to you somewhere some point in time but in case you did like consider sharing and subscribing thank you thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe for more tech insights on cyber security